Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this month's Portals Community Call. I'm Jason Gumpert from msdynamicsworld.com and we are back. It's always a pleasure to be able to host these events. Uh, uh, moderator and presenter as usual is Nicholas Hayduk. Uh, I'm gonna turn things over to him in just a moment. Please do know though, uh, before we get started that we are recording today's event and we will be leaving time uh, for your questions, look for the questions block in the webcast interface. Nick keeps a very close eye on that, and I will be uh, watching it as well in case anything slips through. But, uh, but yeah, please, uh, please do add your questions as we go along. With that, I think we are ready to begin. Uh, Nick, I'm going to hand things over to you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for spending your last day of August uh, with us. Um... Yeah, uh, today uh, our topic of discussion will be the enhanced data model, which is a pretty cool thing that Microsoft is doing and going to light up a few different things within within Power Pages that uh, we're, we're all going to like here in the, I guess, as Microsoft says, the fullness of time. Um, so let's uh, let's get into it. So um, first off, intro, if you uh, aren't, if this is your first call, if you're New to to, uh, to our call here today, my name is Nicholas Hayduk. Uh, I'm the president and a software engineer at Engineered Code Consulting Inc. based here, right, right here in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP uh, and I've been working with the Power Apps Portals, Power Pages, ADX Studio uh, product for the last, uh, I don't know, 14 years or so since about 2009. Um, so if you, it, aren't already connected with me on LinkedIn or don't follow us on, I guess, Twitter or X as it's called these days, um, please feel free to uh, connect with me there. We do have a, a blog that we do every about once a month. We've got our YouTube channel where these recordings go up as well as our uh, weekly uh, tips. So we do a tip every, every Tuesday, we release a new tip, um, as well as I co-host a podcast on Power Pages with uh, Mr. George Dubinsky. Uh, we just had another episode released um, just a couple days ago, um, along with we did record another one earlier this week, so that should be out relatively soon as well. So um, I think we our last one was on on payments, um, so different options for payments, um, and then uh, the topic of the next one is essentially just all the the recent news that's come out over the last few months, the release wave. Um, some of the cool new features that that are coming out with Power Pages. So, uh, if you if podcasts are your thing uh, and Power Pages are your thing, then that's that's an option for you. Um, as always, just want to uh, say thank you to uh, Jason and, and the entire MS Dynamics World team for their support and assistance with these community calls over the last uh, number of years now. I think I think this is number 41 that we're on. We've been doing these for for a few years now. So uh, I guess this would be we're nearing the the end of year four. So um, thanks to Jason for all of his uh, support and and assistance. And uh, yeah. So in terms of agenda, um, it'll be our typical agenda. We'll we've got a little bit of portals news. Uh, then we will talk about our topic of the day, which again is that enhanced data model. Uh, we'll have the we'll talk about the time of the next call and we will finish with a q a session so if anyone has any questions about today's topic or uh, any other topic uh, as jason mentioned uh, do that in the questions block there in your uh, go to webinar software all right let's talk about the uh, portals news so uh, this month we got a couple items that were um, that were announced on the power pages blog um, that um, are new since we last got together. Um, so one of these is the co-presence features. So um, co-presence is essentially the idea that while you're working in the Power Pages Design Studio, you can see who else is in the studio, and in fact, you can also see who is editing specific web pages. So the goal here is to avoid the situation where maybe two people are working on the same thing and they both click save and one someone loses their work because it's essentially uh you know whoever clicks save last is is going to win that battle. So hopefully if there's some awareness there about oh there's someone else already editing this page or you can at least see who else is editing the site 
um, hopefully that just leads to better collaboration between the, the various team members who might be working on a Power Pages site. Uh, there's also some integrated chat, um, I believe integrated with Teams chat. Now, I personally uh, haven't had a chance to play around with this yet. Uh, it's in public preview and I believe only enabled in the United States. Um, my demo environment and my test environment is in Canada, so so I haven't seen this yet. Um, but it has been announced as public preview in the blog. So if you're lucky enough to have a, an American instance, uh, you can, I believe, go around it and play around with this. Um, the other one is a whole bunch of stuff in Copilot. Uh, Copilot is obviously the, the big newsmaker these days. It's what Microsoft is heavily focusing on. Um, and so there's essentially a bunch of announcements uh, for for what you can do for Copilot for makers within the Power Pages Design Studio. So previously, the, the Copilot uh, experience uh, helped you generate some text if you want to. You could say, hey, create an intro for my portal that has to do with customer help desk. And it would give you some text there. Um, it also had some, I think, ability to maybe find some images. It also had the ability to create a, a new form so you could say hey i want a form for accepting job applications and it would go off and it could actually create tables for you in dataverse and wire up the forms for you on your power pages site um so what's what's new is uh there's actually a copilot pane in the design studio so that's essentially kind of a, a almost like an ai chatbot where you can ask it kind of all sorts of various questions hey how do i do this how do i do that um, and it's essentially, you know, indexed all the, the content, the Microsoft Learn content. So essentially a, a way to get your questions answered about what you want to do. So um, that, that specific feature doesn't build anything for you. It just can answer your questions and give you advice. Or um, I, think, I think there's still stuff about, um, hey, how do I, you know, how do I write a liquid fetch XML query that does this? Or, you know, that's that sort of stuff. So um, that new co-pilot pane um, is there. Um, you also, it also has the ability to generate uh, entire web pages now, including the integration of a stock photo library. So you can essentially ask uh, Copilot to create you a page and you kind of give it the description of what you're looking for and it will build an entire page for you. Um, we talked about, I, I believe there's some, incre um, some, some new functionality around the, the forms generation. So, so they've continued to expand on that. Um, there's also the ability for it to create a theme. So uh, the example I, I saw was, hey, create a theme for my Power Pages site based on the LinkedIn theme. So um, that's one of the big asks that we get when we're working with our clients is create a theme based on my kind of main main website. So um, uh, I'm interested to see kind of how, how good it is at say, hey, here's a site over here. Go take a look at that and, and generate me a theme based on, based on some other stuff. Um, and then they say that there's some improved kind of text generation uh, functionality in there. So Quite a laundry list. If you go check out the the Microsoft uh, Power Pages blog, you'll you'll see uh, quite an extensive blog post with all the different features that they're they're talking about for for Copilot. Um, and I I expect that that will continue to the list of things that you can do with Copilot to grow and grow. I think there have been some announcements about creating entire uh, websites. Um, so I think there's lots more coming. Uh, the one that I'm excited about, um, which I believe was in the release notes, is the ability to actually expose Copilot to the users of your Power Pages site. Um, I don't think that's out yet, but I believe that's in the release notes so that um, all of this is about on this list here is the Copilot for the people building Power Pages. But won't it be great to, to be able to give Copilot to the users of your site? Which will essentially, I think the idea there is that it will essentially index the content of your site and you you know the people will be able to ask it. Um, you know, questions about the content on the site and potentially to help uh, people say fill in a form. So if there's a you know long form on your on on the site, they might be able to a copilot might be able to help them to fill out the forms as well. So um, yeah, so copilot that's obviously a big thing, um, and I expect that that trend to continue. All right, that's what I have for for news this week. So why don't we get into today's topic, which is the enhanced data model. Um, I didn't prepare any slides for today. I just figured I would open up the, the interface and we, we'll talk about um, 
and what it is and i'll show you the enhanced data model and some of the other um you know what it is um why it's cool um and how to turn it on that sort of thing so i'm going to start off with how do we well we'll start off with a little bit of background so um the enhanced data model is something new here in the last i don't know six months or so um this is in contrast to the old data model or as i think microsoft refers to it as the standard data model so the the data model is essentially the all the different solutions that have been installed in your dataverse environment over the years um, and all these solutions um, were put in with a publisher prefix of adx so these are literally the solutions that came from adx studio way back in the day so if i'm looking at my list of um uh, of solutions that exist in my environment if i look at say this portal dependencies solution and i look at these tables if it ever loads there we go so we'll see we've got web page and web role and if i were to look at this you can see let's go back to the uh objects here you can see there's a whole bunch of adx underscore uh tables so adx studio being the original developers of this product um when they created all these solutions back in the day that was their prefix and so if you ever see the adx underscore tables you know you're dealing with the standard data model which is the the old data model and there were literally dozens of tables in there this is just a small small list of them website web page web file site marker site setting page template content snippet all of these are, are adx underscore obviously account and contact aren't but essentially the rest of these are are those adx underscore tables so the the thing to know about this new enhanced data model is that the actual the data model itself has remained pretty much unchanged you still have the same relationships between these tables essentially what microsoft has done is they've created a new uh set of these tables but they've done so in in a, in kind of a pretty cool way so um instead of the adx underscore tables the new enhanced data model um, what you'll start seeing are mspp microsoft power pages underscore so if you're dealing with MSPP underscore uh, tables that you know you're dealing with the enhanced data model. So um, now you have the choice right now. If you have a, a Power Pages environment, um, you can see here we have the option to switch to the enhanced data model. So if I open this one up, I open up my development environment here, and then I go into my Power Pages sites, that's where I have the toggle. Now you can see I've switched this toggle on. Um, I can turn it off if I want, um, but essentially once I turn it on, what's going to do is it's going to install some of these base, um, kind of this base package in my environment. And once I have it turned on, any site that I create from this point forward, any template that has been set up to use the new enhanced data model will be created using that enhanced data model. Now that's an important caveat because not all of the templates are built yet in the new uh, enhanced data model. So even though you may have switched this on, if you install a template that isn't available in this new enhanced data model, it will continue to work or it'll continue to use the standard data model. So this switch only applies to, um, at last I checked, I think there were three or four of the templates that were actually enabled for this enhanced data model. Now, uh, important to mention the enhanced data model still in preview. So everything we're talking about right now, still all in preview. Um, so I wouldn't wouldn't really recommend it for production use. Um, and in fact, like, yeah, even if you're starting a project now that you know it's gonna launch in the next few months, uh, I'm still not at the point yet where where we're taking on any, um, where we're recommending that we, we we go with any new projects that are using the enhanced data model. So it's still very much in preview. It's certainly the way of the future. I, I just don't know personally when that, you know, when that future will arrive. But that's what you do. You essentially flip that switch. And then once you have that um, switch on, again, if you create a new Power Pages site, um, and so uh, I'm gonna open this up, this EDM is enhanced data model. If I open this up, we'll, we'll be able to see that I, right there it says data model is enhanced. Whereas if I look at say this one, which is my, my old site that I used, we can see that the data model here is standard. 
So both enhanced and standard can live within the same Dataverse environment at one time. Essentially, it's like two completely different sets, sets of tables. So one of the best ways to demonstrate that is if I open up my um, kind of model-driven app, if I look under the apps, there's actually two separate um, management apps. So the portal management app, that's the one we've known and loved for many, many years now. If I browse through this one and I look at what tables I'm looking at, you can see here ADX underscore website. Now, if I go to here, there's a new one called Power Pages Management. And again, I'll just kind of, before I click over here, you can see that here I've got six of these websites in here. If I go into here and I switch over to Power Pages Management, again, it looks, you know, you may not even notice the difference if you ended up in the in the wrong spot. Um, because it looks very, very similar. But here I've got a, a different list of two different websites. And you can see that the list or the table that I'm looking at here is MSPP underscore website. So um, while they're both contained in the same Dataverse environment, they're, 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 they're actually uh, stored, the, all, the data, uh, all the data in Dataverse are stored in completely separate tables. So again, to turn them on, um, you go into the Power Platform Admin Center, go into your sites and you flip the switch and then any new sites um, that you create that are enabled for the enhanced data model will, will get you that. Uh, I'm not aware of what the plan is for moving existing sites that are on the standard model to the enhanced data model. Um, I suspect that's on the roadmap, but I honestly think that that's a ways away. Of course, first the enhanced data model has to go into general availability, and then there, there I expect there'll be some sort of transition to the to the new data model. Um, now, what I what what kind of my favorite part of this whole enhanced data model is, you look at this MSPP underscore website table. It looks, you know, it's in our model driven app here. It's got an icon. It's got a, a rose in here. Um, or even you look at say web pages again, MS underscore or MSPP underscore web page. You got all your data in here. Um, there are actually only three main tables in Dataverse that store all of this data. Um, I believe there's a website, there's a language, and then there's a component. So most of the tables that we're looking at here are actually virtual tables. So this MSPP underscore web page, if you looked in Dataverse, and, and we'll do that here in a second using the XRM toolbox, if you look in Dataverse, this table is actually a virtual table. So why don't we actually just take a peek at that now? Uh, here's our XRM toolbox, and I'm going to actually look at, say, the metadata browser. So if we look at the metadata browser and I look at MSPP underscore, all of the MSPP underscore tables are actually virtual tables. Uh, is Actually, I can't remember what it is in here that would tell us that it's virtual. Is it like is virtual or something like that? Uh, But somewhere in here, it would tell us that it's a, a virtual table. Uh, I'm assuming you can uh, trust me that that's true. Um, so any of these MSPP ones are now, I'm just gonna search for Power Pages. So Power Pages site, Power Pages language. So I'm just looking for a table. Let me take this out here. So here are some of the core tables, power pages. So power page component. So power page component is the big one. I'm just gonna do power page here. So power page component is the table that contains most of the MSPP, but we've also got power pages site and power pages language. So if I go into say my fetch XML builder and I do a query on power pages component and I get the data, we'll see rows in here for all of the different things I'm dealing with. So let's just take an example here. This one right here, 
this one is a site setting. So there's a Power Pages component type, which is a site setting, and the actual content of it is actually stored in a blob of JSON in the content field. What's this one? So I'm looking at source, if channel. So this looks like it might be a web template, perhaps. Yeah, and we can see based on the Power Pages component type that we have a web template. Uh, if we go say to the very top of the list, I think we have um, a web, we got web page access control rules, web template, site setting, web template. We have a web page here, and you can see that all of them, the contents of the actual table are stored in this content field as a blob, a long blob of JSON. And then the virtual tables are essentially uh, querying this and bringing back only, you know, if for the, the web page table, it's a virtual table provider that's only bringing back the Power Pages components that uh, match this. So, I honestly like uh, this. I thought was super clever from Microsoft. Um, the the main thing I believe they want to achieve with this, and we'll talk about, you know, it's essentially the ALM process. What they've done is they've made these tables um, solution aware, so you can include elements from this table, the Power Pages component table, in your solutions and then move it between environments. I think what they wanted to avoid was having to make 50 different tables solution aware. So rather than do that, they made a couple tables, the big one being this Power Pages component, they make that table solution aware, allow you to move it between the environments. But, and if you've ever kind of gone through the XRM portals community code, if you ever wanted to go through that and update all the code to bring it in with this data model and handle all this JSON and all that sort of stuff. Like it would have been, it would have been a nightmare. It would have been an entire re-engineering effort of the entire product. So by using a virtual table, all they really probably had to do was change the code that referenced the prefix. Cause you'll notice that if I go into here and I look at all the different table names. So we have MSPP underscore web page, and then we have ADX underscore web page. All they've done is change the prefix. So all the code that references ADX underscore web page, um, all you'd have to do is replace that with MSPP underscore web page. So that's a lot less work than trying to re-engineer the whole product. And um, so, I, I, yeah, I think it's super, super clever what they've done here with these um, by creating the single table. Now that that's going to offer a lot of optimizations. They say it's faster to install. Um, in, in general, it's just faster. You've got that one kind of primary table where, where all the data is coming from. Again, it's it's uh, solution aware, so it's ALM enabled. Um, so yeah, I think it's kind of super clever what they've done to to create these uh, these three main tables and then use the virtual tables to give us that layer of abstraction so that we're, you know, to give us what we're used to, um, which are these, you know, these different tables without having to write, rewrite the whole product. So that's essentially what the enhanced data model is. It's these new MSPP underscore web page, all these MSPP uh, underscore tables that uh, again, very much mirror what the old one uh, looked like. Um, some of them, again, not every single table has changed. Um, so you'll see here invitations looks like that's still the ADX. Um, but if you kind of go through the list here, um, table permissions, column permissions, publishing state, web page access control rules, web roles. Um, now, there are some minor things. I know e even within the uh, Power Pages Design Studios, there, there are a few bugs that are specifically related to the enhanced data model. Again, it's in preview. That's to be kind of expected. So, but for the most part, anytime you're seeing these MSPP underscore uh, tables, you know that that's the kind of the enhanced data model um, and it's available in that Power Pages uh, management app instead of the portal management app. Again, I, I expect that in a few years from now, we won't even be talking about the old one anymore. Everything will have kind of moved over, um, but I don't know what that process looks like. Um, so, what I was hoping to kind of convey as part of this call was, um, hey, this is there. If you're doing a lot of PowerPages stuff, it's probably something worth playing around with. But um, 
I, I do know in the real world, some people see preview things, they turn them on and then they do start using them even though you're not supposed to use them. I, I do wanna warn you, this is something that I wouldn't be doing in production yet. I think that there's, um, you know, there, there's quite a few unknowns about how it's all gonna work. I mean, I love the ALM stuff that we'll talk about here in a second, but this is one of those features where you flip the switch and you start building a power pages site and you don't even realize that you're actually creating something that's quite a bit different. Um, so just, I want to kind of raise awareness on this a little bit because flipping the switch could have some, some major impacts. Um, and, um, you know, if you really want to be uh, cutting edge, bleeding edge, um, you know, give it a try, but uh, I don't, I don't know if I'd be recommending it for, for production. So, um, and yeah, I'm keeping an eye here. No questions yet, but if you do have any questions as I go through this, please, please drop those in the in the chat. So, um, so let's talk about how this actually works from an ALM perspective. So, if I go back to my solutions here, um, I'm just going to open up my my golf solution here. I don't know if I have any. Looks like I do have a bunch of site components. So now that I've enabled this environment, this Dataverse environment for uh, the enhanced data model, it gives me these options of including components in my site. So you'll see that we talked about how there's kind of three real tables underneath the scenes, the non-virtual tables. So there's site, there's site component, and there's site language. So you have the ability to include or exclude these different components as part of your solution. So you can see in here, I have a, a bunch of different tables. Now, these will only, again, be the tables that are enabled for the enhanced data model, but I have the ability to add or remove basically individual records from that Power Pages component table. I can add or remove them from my solution. Then when I move this over to a new environment or to a different environment, it's going to move that data and, and create that data in the other environment. So this, I think, in addition to, I think they, they do talk about some performance issues. This, uh, um, as part of even the, um, the managed pipeline, so with the, if, you, if you're creating managed power platform environments and you're leveraging the kind of simplified pipelines that exist when you're using managed environments, Again, this will play nicely with that because again, you're just moving these solutions. So enabling the users or enabling the, the administrators to include these different rows in the component tables of Power Pages allows you to move these things between environments uh, pretty seamlessly. So um, again, I, I do know some people who are super eager for this type of functionality. You know, they wanna be able to move things uh, using the solution um, to me it's not I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be enabling this functionality just because of that quite yet um, but that's that's essentially the idea here is that when you then move this you would you export the solution move it to another environment all of these uh, elements in the enhanced data model uh, move along with it all right um, so, um, I think if we go into make.powerpages.microsoft.com, and then we look at the templates, just trying to see if they've given an indication about which templates oh i've reached the maximum they're not going to let me install any new ones anyways so here let me just do um power pages enhanced data model i'm just going to take a so again as you can see this is in preview um so we talked about how you can see that there's also um you can also check in the pack cli there's an option to do that. Um, if you l list all of your Power Pages sites, it will give you an indication as to whether it's version one, which is the old one, or version two. Um, but again, so here are the three components that we talked about. So site, um, site component, site language. Now, I mentioned that there are certain tables that aren't 
uh, solution aware. So these ones are still maintaining the old ADX underscore tables. So um, some of these, which are, um, they talk about these as kind of more transactional business data. So uh, the invitation is the big one and then external identities, you wouldn't want to be transitioning those between there. But again, you can see here, they talk about the virtual tables that have been created. So there's a mapping of, you know, which one, which tables are stored in which or in which virtual table. So you can see even the ones where it's kind of a one-to-one -one mapping. So you got Power Pages site. Uh, again, they still create these MSPP underscore websites virtual table to to map to this. Again, I think that's just about making the making the transition uh, in the behind the scenes code uh, easier rather than uh, replacing ADX website with Power Pages site. They they do that just for kind of consistency. Um, so yeah, so here's the list uh, of the sites that use the enhanced data model. So all the starter layouts, I think they've actually added to this list last time I, since last time I checked. So application processing, blank page, program registration, and schedule meetings. So those are kind of the, the newer templates. Um, any of the older Dynamics 365 templates, so uh, the kind of the traditional old four of customer self-service, employee self-service, um, community and uh, partner portal, those ones have not been upgraded. So even if you do have that uh, enabled, um, that will uh, still continue to be the old um, data model. Um, so yeah, uh, if there's anything else in here, uh, they talk about editing the site, data model, CLI parameters. Um, so yeah, again, they talk about how there's going to be guidance on moving. Um, yeah, and so I just want to highlight these known issues because there are a few things. The, the one area that I've seen um, is a little bit different. It was around the web roles. Um, so there is a different portal contact enhanced form. So yeah, the way that web roles works is the only kind of big change that I noticed um, in terms of like it being a little bit a little bit different than the old way. Um, and then, yeah, this is the other one where it's the configuring the list actions. There's just a couple of little things in the um, in the portals in the Power Pages Studio. Um, so yeah, just a few a few little things to know. So if you're going to be playing around with the enhanced data model, uh, it's good to know that so you don't think you're going crazy. Um, okay, we've got a question here. So regarding the performance issue, well, while we are fetching lots of data inside the custom page, how could we address the indexing and performance issue? Sometimes it's taking a long time to load a custom page. Yeah, so I don't think that the, the enhanced data model is really going to help with that. Um, let me just bring up the Power Pages blog here. Because in their announcement of it, Power Platform, oh, see they've talked about this. Uh, co presence protecting code. Let me just find because they do talk about the developer website, virtual tables. There we go. So they talk about this. Uh, where do they talk about the performance Our platform solution concepts? Maybe it was in this documentation. Uh... Oh, right here. This is what I was looking for. So they say provisioning of websites is faster. They say the design studios uh, experience is faster. Um, and then they talk about ALM. And essentially the updates of power pages, enhancements, and bugs, bugs fixer improves. This kind of language is really your just indication from Microsoft. This is where the future is going to be um, if you're going to be investing invest in the enhanced versus the standard uh, but again it's kind of tough to do that while it's while it's still in our preview so um, so uh, Anwar in regards to your question about performance um, this isn't really going to really isn't going to help with that uh, unfortunately because this is about the the performance of the out of the box tables that come with power pages um, my guess is if you're fetching a lot of data inside a custom page, what you're doing is you're fetching uh, data from tables that aren't the Power Pages tables. So whether that's 
you know, contact or account or, or, or custom tables or orders or invoices, that sort of thing. Um, so if, if you're seeing really long um, load times, uh, the first thing I would be looking into it would be caching. So whether or not your site is appropriately, like s sometimes caching, people are always trying to work around and say, hey, I don't want to cache, but sometimes you might not realize that you're accidentally not leveraging the caching when you can be. So that can depend on say what kind of query, if you're including something in your, your fetch XML query that's changing all the time. So it's constantly having to retrieve, you know, thousands of records from Dataverse. Well, that's just going to be slow. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, um, uh, the other thing I would be looking at is if those tables have plugins or other sort of synchronous logic that 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 fire when you do any sort of retrieval. Uh, if you have any sort of like retrieve multiple plugins, um, that can be another reason for the for the slowness as well. Okay. Um, so in terms of the enhanced data model, um, that's kind of what I wanted to cover today. Uh, again, you can turn it on within the Power Platform Admin Center. Um, you know, if, if you're working on a lot of Power Pages projects or you know, you've got a big one that's kind of the, your main focus, um, I think it's probably worthwhile playing around with. If you're the type of person that you you kind of work on one and it's kind of half of your, you know, it's it's not your main main responsibility, I would kind of put this in the column of, um, expect to hear more about it in six months or a year when, when you're going to be moving towards this from your existing site. You know, similar to what the, say, the transition or the migration from, say, Bootstrap 3 to Bootstrap 5. Um, you know, there's not a lot of, um, right now, there's not a whole lot of details in it, um, at least with, with this enhanced data model. You can play around with it, um, but it's not something I would be, uh, since we don't know what's going to come out into preview or out of preview, um, I wouldn't be starting any new project with it quite yet. Um, so it's something there to be played with, but but not necessarily something that uh, um, I would be putting into production use yet. Um, okay, so so if people have other questions, we'll just finish off the rest of the the presentation here. So um, in terms of our next call, um, we do have a call um, scheduled for September 14th. Um, we're going to have actually one of, have one of my colleagues uh, from Engineered Code uh, present. Um, his name is Jacob Chapman, and he'll be going through just some various uh, JavaScript and Liquid and just kind of some more advanced uh, techniques that he's been using over the last uh, little while as he's been building out um, Power Pages sites for various customers. So it will be a little bit more uh, technical and, um, you know, last little while I've, I've been receiving requests for like you know more examples of how you can do different things so that's that would be an example of a call where um you know you'll see some code and you'll see some different techniques on how to achieve um usually it's related to like the you know wanting some advanced ui enhancements that sort of thing so so jacob um will be helping us out with that um Again, want to uh, express my appreciation uh, to to Jake or uh, to Jason and the team at MS Dynamics World. Um, looking forward to seeing everyone in September. Um, and beyond that, I will just uh, open it up to see if there's anyone else who has any questions, um, whether it's about today's topic of the enhanced data model or whether it's anything Power Pages or other portal technologies um, that are built into the uh, Power Platform. So we'll give it a minute or two here. If there if there are no additional questions, we'll we'll end the session. But uh, we'll we'll give people a second here in, in case there were any additional questions. Well, I'm seeing nothing. So I think maybe uh, Jason, maybe we can wrap it up early today. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Nick. Great job as always. Thanks to everyone in the audience for uh, your time and attention. We look forward to seeing you again real soon. And uh, with that, I think, oh, we will be sending out a link to the recording and a link to next month's registration. And uh, with that, we will uh, wrap up. I think if you do see any sort of a survey, feedback survey after this that pops up, please feel free to fill that out too. We always appreciate any feedback. Uh, with that, I will uh, end the event. Have a good day, everyone.